bolus in the kingdom of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Christ is risen from the dead. By death he trampled death, and to those in the tombs he granted life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For peace from high, for the salvation of souls. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For this holy church and for all who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our holy father, Francis Poporum, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our most reverend metropolitan William for God, loving Bishop Milan. For the Venerable Presbyter, the Diacon in Christ, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our government and for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for the months of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel by sea, air, and land, for the sick that suffer in the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we be delivered from all affliction, rise and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Protect us, save us, and mercy on us, and preserve us, O oh God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, that Theotokos and the Virgin Mary with all the saints, let come their souls and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. O Lord of God, mighty beyond description, glorious of understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression, look with compassion on us and his holy church master, and show us and those who pray with us riches your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, your glory, honor, worship, now and ever and forever.
Christ, the Lord, and Now and ever and forever. Thank you. 
Bolata Spietente, peace be to all of wisdom of Spietente. In those days, as the number of disciples grew, the ones who spoke Greek complained that their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food as compared with the widows of those who spoke Hebrew. The twelve assembled the community of the disciples and said, It is not right for us to neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Look around among your own number, brothers, for seven men acknowledged to be deeply spiritual and prudent, and we shall appoint them to this task. This will permit us to concentrate on prayer and the ministry of the word. The proposal was unanimously accepted by the community. Following this, they selected Stephen, a man filled with faith and the Holy Spirit, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch who had been a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles, who first prayed over them and then imposed hands on them. The word of God continued to spread, while at the same time the number of the disciples in Jerusalem enormously increased. There were many priests among those who embraced the faith. Peace be to you, reader, wisdom and beauty. your land and revived the fortunes of Jacob. Mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Wisdom, let us stand to listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. from the Holy Gospel 
according to Saint Mark. Glory to you. Let us be attentive. At that time, Joseph for Arimathea arrived, a distinguished member of the Sanhedrin. He was another who looked forward to reign of God. He was bold enough to seek an audience with Pilate and urgently requested the body of Jesus. Pilate was surprised that Jesus should have died so soon. He summoned the centurion and inquired whether Jesus was already dead. Learning from the centurion that Jesus was dead, Pilate released the corpse to Joseph. Then, having bought a linen shroud, Joseph took Jesus down, wrapped him in the linen, and placed him in a tomb which had been cut out of rock. Finally, the hero a stone across the entrance of the tomb. Meanwhile, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph observed where Jesus had been entombed. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, bought perfumed oils which with they intended to go and anoint Jesus very early just after sunrise on the first day of the week. They came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will ro roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked, they found that the stone had been rolled back. It was a huge one. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting at the right, dressed in a white robe. This frightened them thoroughly, but he reassured them, You need not be amazed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, the one who was crucified. He has been raised up. He is not here. See the place where they buried him. Go now and tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you to Galilee, where you will see him just as he told you. They made their way out and fled from the tomb, bewildered and trembling. And because of their great fear, they said nothing to anyone. Christ is risen. Again, two weeks after Pascha, we hear again the gospel of our resurrection. It is important to hear this again because we can lose this kind of importance of this feast, of this event for us. And this gospel wants to teach us something. There's a message somehow hidden between lines, or we can find it there in the acting, in the life of these people. And this message can help us to make our faith stronger. We see Joseph, who came to Pilate to ask for body of Christ. It was not something normal. It was very, he was very, he had courage to do this. Especially what happened before and to, to ask for the body and to, to do burial. It was dangerous because all Jews were against Christ. Romans didn't care, but there are not some kind of 
fans of Christ too. To do this, it means to let Joseph, he risk his reputation because he had high position and he put himself to danger. He risked everything to do this act of mercy and to bury Christ's body. Those ladies, we heard about them, they were watching what was happening and mourning after Sabbath was over. They were running to a tomb mourning. And if we read about Jerusalem, about how, what kind of city it was at the time of Jesus, it was not safe city for women, especially if they were running so eerily, you know, and through these streets towards tomb. They had courage. And not only that city was dangerous, but again, this attitude towards Christ at the moment was, was bad. It was dangerous. But they went there because they wanted to give the body what was supposed to give those who died. They wanted to anoint the body with those oils. They had this courage. They had this courage because of one thing. They loved Jesus. They loved him. And because of that, they didn't care about reputation, about consequences, about danger. They loved him. And they wanted to show act of love when he was dead. And I think this is some kind of key to understand, to understand what is essential in our faith. Look, if we read Paul's, you know, different Paul's, like if I remember well, so during the last 10 years in the United States, attendance in Catholic Church attendance in the, uh, for Sunday's liturgies dropped on 50%. It was like 30% less if we compare this situation with 10 years ago. The same Paul says that only one teenager of six stays in the church when the teenager uh, reaches adult age. Now even like this, it's, it's dropping down. Before they were talking that there are crises among the teen face of teenagers, but now they are talking that there are, there are crises in face in 10 years old. They refuse to come to the church. And we can see that somehow this Christianity is losing is grounds. And we see that around ourselves. And we ask, why is that? For sure, it is the reason is not that we don't know about Christ. How many people they go through this catechesis, they go through these classes, they read a lot of books and they have really some kind of even solid knowledge about Christ. But still, they don't, they don't believe. They don't come. Knowledge is not the problem. We have probably more knowledge about God, about Christ, about Christianity than generation before us. But we can see that this knowledge is not helping. 
because something is missing. And what is missing is this love. It is a love which we can see in Joseph from our gospel. This love which we see from these ladies who didn't care about danger, who didn't care about their reputation, who didn't care about anything. They just wanted to show for them the last act of love to Christ. It is love which is not emotion. This love, it is not something what we used to say because we say, I love Christ, I love God. But many times we have to admit that it is just phrase we learned is in classrooms and we use that because we should say that. But it is true. It is true that, this, that it is this love which forced me to come to Jesus and to be with him even I should put to my reputation in danger. It is love which forced me, you know, to, to come to him and to be with him and to glorify him. Even I am supposed to pay a price for that, that I give up my other things, temporary things, just because of him. It's not that. It's not that. You know, like we have this study of spiritual life on Mondays. And I, I said to one priest, you know, said, well, I'm very happy, you know, that so many people accepted this offer and they're coming and it's great to see that. And he said, well, it's great, really. This number is wonderful. It's great. But then he was a little bit silent. He said, but not everybody should have this desire to learn how to live life with Christ. And I thought about this and I said, well, you are right. You are right. If we love Christ, so should be this fever in our hearts to be with him, to use each opportunity to praise him, to learn about him, to learn how to be like he is. But how can we get this love which would make our life so full of Christ, full of faith. How we can get this love which is not phrase? How to love Christ and do not lie to ourselves? Look, these ladies, from the Gospel we know that they didn't show up on the, this Pascha morning. Those ladies were a group of ladies who were following Christ and disciples during whole three years. And they were serving to their needs. They were taking care of these practical things. But, but meanwhile, they were listening to Christ's teaching. They were learning about his, his words, about his message. They were with him day and night for three years. And this changed them so much. This understanding of Christ changed their hearts so much that they loved him. And this, their love was rewarded by something what they would not expect. They loved him even he was dead and wanted to show him act of love, but what 
God gave them in return this wonderful message. I am alive and I am with you. And notice, resurrected Christ didn't appear to Pilate, didn't appear to this chief priest. Nobody of those who were against him, they didn't see him. Only those who loved him could see him. And this is what we are supposed to know about spiritual life, that we need to enter to the school of Christ, to be with him in intensive way, to really sacrifice our time, to sit at his feet and to listen what he really says, not what the world is saying, what Christ is saying to us. We should really pray a lot of, to be close, to get closer to him, to be with him, because this faith and love comes from him as a gift to our hearts. It's not our product to be just get it when we try to be with him. And from this faith, from this love, this mystical understanding, what resurrection means for our life is coming. And once we get this, everything will be like nothing for us. We will lose taste for temporal things. They will not taste pleasantly for us. Then we will see that not our activities, not our plans, not our way, not our somehow illusions can satisfy our heart. Only God himself. And this is solution for a problem of this world. We will not return faith back to hearts of people through seminars, through books, through classes. We will not return back faith of, to God through some kind of our activities, good events, good feeling words. We can return faith to hearts of people only when we enter to his life, when we will be with him for a long time until we get these gifts which are coming from God. Give us strong faith, gift of love, and then this gift of understanding God's mysteries. If we are looking for easier way, we will not find it. This way, this narrow way, as Jesus says, was tested for 2,000 years. And there is no other way. Nobody found other way than this one when we really try to get to his presence. Let's pray. Let's beg him. Let's ask him. Show me the way. Because I want to be with you. Not only now here, but forever. Let's ask him and beg him during this liturgy. Show me the way to this perfect love, perfect faith, and perfect knowledge. Amen. Let us all say, with our soul, with our mind, let us say, Almighty God of our fathers, we pray you here and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy.
Christian, as O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you here and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Again, we pray for Holy Father Francis Popo Roman, for a most reverend metropolitan William, for God, Loving Bishop Milan, for those who serve and have served in His Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers, and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the people present who have made you great abundant mercy for those who show us mercy and for Christians of the true faith. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are merciful, loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Remember his kingdom, our Holy Father, Francis Popo Roma, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God, loving Bishop Milan, and the entire priesthood, the Econom Monastic Order, our government, and all in the service of our country, and the even memorable founders and benefactors of this Holy Church. May the Lord God remember all your Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. Precious gives place before us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Grant His mercy, only begotten Son, with me all blessed together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever and forever. Love one another that with one mind we may profess. The doors 
the doors in wisdom, or let us be attentive. Stand right, last and you let us be attentive to offer the holy name for in peace. Mercy, peace, our sacrifice of praise. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Oh, let us give thanks to the Lord. It is, and it is proper and just to sing to the bless you, to praise you, to thank you, to worship you in every place your dominion. For you are God, ineffable, conceivable, invisible, incomprehensible. Ever existing and ever the same, you and your only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit. You brought us out of non existence into being again, raised us up when we had fallen, left nothing undone, unto you brought us to heaven, and give us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you, your only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit, for all that we know, uh, that we do not know, for the manifest and the benefits bestowed on us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands. Even under the stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six wings, many eyes soaring out down their wings, singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn on. We also cry out with these blessed powers, 
O loving and kind master, and say, Holy are you, and all holy, you and your only begotten Son, your Holy Spirit. Holy are you, and all holy, magnificent is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in you should not perish, but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan in our behalf on the night he was betrayed. Or rather, when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and all pure and make clothed hands, gave thanks and blessed a sanctified broad, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. Amen. Likewise, he took the choice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. <coughs> Remembering their forty seven command, and all has come to pass, and on behalf of the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sin at the right hand, and the second coming glory. Offer you your own from your own, always and everywhere. to you this spiritual and body sacrifice and we implore, pray, and treat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts lying before us and make this bread the precious body of Christ. And that which is in this shell is the precious body of Christ, changing them by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, those who partake of them, they may bring about the spirit of vigilance, the remission of sins, the communion of your Holy Spirit, the fullness of the heavenly kingdom and confidence in you, not judgment or condemnation. Moreover, we offer the spiritual sacrifice for those departing faith, the forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ethics, and for each spirit brought to perfection in faith. He is special from most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, Dato Otokos and the Virgin Mary.
Among the first, O Lord, in member Holy Father, Francis Popor, our most reverend Metropolitan William Ragada, we Bishop Milan, preserve them for your holy churches in peace, safety, honor, health for many years, as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. And remember all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise the most honored and magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you and with your spirit. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the precious gifts offered the consecrated our God who loves us all. May receive the holy heavenly mystic altar as our most spiritual fragrance and send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, mercy. Asking for unity in the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us come to ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may with confidence without condemnation. There I call you, Father, God of heaven, and Son. And Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. Bow your heads to the Lord. The grace, the merits, and loving kindness of your only begotten Son, which we are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Oh, let us be attentive. Holy gifts to holy people.
People, God, and bless your inheritance. I is our God, always, now, and ever. And forever. the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, life creating all some mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily thank the Lord. Lord and mercy. For your sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Now let us go forth in peace. In the name of let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctifying those who trust in you, save your people and bless your inheritance. <coughs> Preserve the fullness of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house, glorify them, return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace, your world, to your church, as a priest, to our government, and to all your people. For all generous, given and ever perfect gift is from Baal, coming down from the Father of lights, and we give glory, thanksgiving, worship to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. Now 
blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace, loving kindness, always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. Glory to you, grace God, our hope, glory to you. Christ is risen from the dead, by death he trampled death, and to those in the tomb he granted life. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, give the blessing. May Christ, our true God, risen from the dead by death, trampling death, and granting light to those in the tombs, have mercy on us and save us, we praise of his most pure mother. Our Holy Father, John Christ, the Bishop of Constantinople, our Holy Father, and the close patron of this church, and through the praise of all the saints, for Christ is good and loves us all. Amen. Christ is risen. Indeed. Thank you for beautiful liturgy. Thank you. You came to worship our Lord. Before I, I, I have just one announcement, but at first, please say prayer for all those who are sick. We have really, really the last day, missing those persons, we have really a lot of people who are seriously sick. Remember, remember them in your prayers, even if you don't know about all of them, remember those who suffer. I would like to wish happy birthday to Emily Dennison. Happy birthday, Emily. Thank you for everything you do for church, for example. And congratulations, because you probably don't know, but Emily got a very high award last Friday. And uh, well, if everybody knows what was that, everybody would be very proud of you. Okay, so congratulations. Happy birthday to Charles Greenwald. Happy birthday to Joe Senderak. Joe, thank you for everything you do for the church. To Aurora Bukaisa, happy birthday. Betty Opalenik, happy birthday. Thank you very much for everything you do for church. To Paula Yurko, happy birthday. Welcome again in our church. And to happy birthday to John Beltich. John, thank you. Not only for serving, but for uh, you, you stay. Not only serving, but for good example you are giving, coming so early to the church to pray. So thank you for that. Please read the bulletin, everything is there. Remember those who are sick. Let's try to find time to be with God. Maybe can really come to strong faith, love, and knowledge. Christ is risen. Christos was Christ. Christ is risen. Christ is risen from the dead. By death he trampled death, and to those in the tombs. He granted life. Life eternal. Let us 